Unemployed and Afraid acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on and of the land where you, the listener, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid a podcast that explores the messy middle of being out on your own and starting over with the people who've done it. I'm your host, Kim Curtin. Thank you for being here. Let's get into today's story of starting over. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Unemployed and Afraid, the stories of starting over. I started following today's guest on Insta about a year or so ago, and I really love the way she shares all of the feels especially how surprised she is at all the amazing things that are happening for her since she started creating and sharing her art. The rest of us, though, are not as surprised because her work is incredible. So we're a few episodes into this brand new pod now, and I really hope you're enjoying the stories and taking something away from them for your own journey of change. If you do get the time, I would love to hear all about it. You can leave a review for the show, or you can slide into my DMs at Unemployed and Afraid on Insta and tell me all the things. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so today's guest is the wonderfully passionate abstract artist, Sophie Lacuda. And it's spelt in the most beautiful way, uh, very French, very gorgeous. But I did check with Sophie to make sure that I pronounced it correctly and didn't try to do a fancy accent. Um, (laughs) So a quick visit to Sophie's beautiful Instagram page will, other than knock your socks off, show you her incredible talent in creating artworks inspired by yoga, minimalism and the sea. Her yoga illustrations that capture the flowing lines of female form in asanas, in yoga poses, have an almost cult-like status. They're gracing homes and even t-shirts all over the world. And her abstract paintings just drop you into an ethereal calm. I've been following Sophie for quite some time and have witnessed her incredible journey in the art world, partnering with people and businesses all over the globe. She shares passionately about the way that following her own passion has opened her into a more aligned sense of self. She's a woman who supports other artists, who shares openly and craves flow. Sophie, welcome to Unemployed and Afraid. Hi, well, happy to be here. Wow, that was so nice listening to your intro about me. <laughs> oh, good. It's all very true. Oh, it just, it still blows me away that this is my journey. Do you know what I mean? Like hearing that, I'm like, that's me. Like, that's so crazy. <laughs> I love that. It's so true, isn't it? You kind of look back and go, oh, oh, wait, who? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's not like I intended to set out on this journey so much. So it's like when you hear it played back to you, you're like, oh, that's all me. That's crazy. Damn straight, that's all you. You're killing it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, So before we get into the real juicy stuff, um, I wanted to start with a little bit of an icebreaker question just to let myself, the listener, know just a little bit more about you. So tell me, how would your oldest friend describe you? You know, I've been asked this before and every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, I think it's this and that. And then today I was like, you know what, I'm just going to ask her because I think that's probably the best way. I love that. It's so spot on with what I've been saying, which is good because I'm like, oh, that shows that (laughs) I think of myself the right way, I guess. But my oldest friend has been my oldest friend since I was like 12, I'd say. So we've been best friends for a long time. And she would say that I'm loyal creative, kind, generous, and easygoing. And I think it's kind of nice because I'm like, those are all the things I would have said that she would have said, which is, yeah, it's kind of spot on, but I guess that's why we're best friends. (laughs) That's beautiful. And what a good friend as well that she didn't immediately allow the opportunity to drop you into like, and this one time when we were drunk, she did this really (laughs) crazy thing. (laughs) I was like, you've gone with all the nice things. Thank you. No, she could definitely say all that. Obviously, we've done all of our early 20s together, so... Oh, She's got a few time. stories to tell, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I probably wouldn't have ever said generous. So it is kind of nice to hear that. Um, I don't know, like, I guess, do you know what? And thinking about it from this point of view with this journey as well, I guess to sort of share your story online. And a lot of the time you don't necessarily get something back from it. Maybe that is generosity mm-hmm. as well, because you're just being raw and you're just being yourself and you don't really know. So maybe, yeah, maybe the generosity thing. I've never really thought of that one, but yeah, otherwise I think she's kind of on the, on the money. I, like to I really agree. I really agree with that. Generosity of spirit is a lot about, you know, when, yeah, when you're sharing yourself online, it is you're giving a part of yourself out there. and Totally. 
it, it feels pretty exposing anytime you do it and Definitely. to not get that feedback sometimes you just it, you know it's great 3 a.m thinking material oh definitely I know I yeah I the thing about this journey is it's so vulnerable and you kind of forget that yeah you are being generous by sharing yourself with the world and yeah I, I was like oh maybe yeah maybe I am generous by doing that because yeah you're right sometimes you don't necessarily hear back straight away or you don't know that you're touching people on the other side of the world through what you're saying so yeah I think yeah maybe Maybe it's so true yeah (laughs) so before the beautiful bio that uh, I just read which you know very easy to write um, about you but who were you before that bio oh I've come a long way in the last few years to be honest um before that from a career point of view, I was sort of, I was in marketing always. I did a design degree and I loved it, but I was also wanting to challenge myself. So I did PR as part of my degree. I wasn't very good at it, which is ironic because that's what I went into. Um, but I sort of told myself when I left uni, like, I'll just get a job that pays, you know, and design is hard to get a job that pays in from the, from the get go. Cause you often have to do an unpaid internship. And so I fell into PR And I was working with entrepreneurs and startups in like the crazy tech boom time about 10 years ago or something where there were all these, you know, 20 somethings, 30 somethings starting up their own businesses. And I think in hindsight, it's taught me a lot about just a lot of the time you don't necessarily know what journey you're on. And these people were just going out there and getting things. So that's where I started. Um, And then I moved into other PR agencies and was very much doing all the hustle and bustle. Um, And then there was probably like, a realization I had on that journey, looking at my directors and thinking, I don't know if I necessarily want to do a director role in PR. It just is, mm-hmm. it's a very busy industry. And so I sort of did a bit of a career pivot where I moved into design companies doing marketing for them. So sort of sharing the two things that I'd learned along the way and being around designers was kind of nice. And I was enjoying being in that creative world again, although myself outside of marketing, I wasn't really creating anything myself. And then, uh, yeah, 2019 and in the whole pandemic, I was made redundant and Mm. it was just, I started painting in about, yeah, 2019 as well as a bit of a healing. I'd lost a family member and I was kind of on a bit of a journey of trying to find a way to let my emotions out. Mm. And part of that was to start looking for something because I didn't have any hobbies before that. Like Mm. I was so embarrassed when people would say like, what do you do? You know? And I think that's so funny because it's like, you know, a lot of the time we don't necessarily like, and it's so fine not to have hobbies as well, but when you want one and you're craving it, Mm -hmm. I think that's where you're like, Oh, what is it? So I found painting through that. And then the redundancy happened. And I think the most valuable thing I got out of redundancy was time. Like Mm -hmm. before that I was like living in the rat race, doing deadlines, just like a nine to five normal person. And then all of a sudden I was like in the middle of a pandemic where no one was hiring for my role. And with all this time on my hands. And so I kind of thought, well, I'm already sharing art on my personal Instagram and why not create a different Instagram and just see where it goes and sort of share this journey that I'm on. So I'd done all that. And in the midst of it all as well, for me, yoga, while I'm not always regularly going, yoga for me is something I always go back to Mm -hmm. when life gets a bit tough. Mm -hmm. And I would always just run back to a class and just feel more centered again. And during mm. that time, while there was all this stuff going on, all I wanted to do was head back into a yoga class, but obviously mm. they were closed. Yeah, so course. I was painting on the side and I was wanting to go to yoga. And I guess that's where it kind of came from is I was like, I'm just going to start drawing these. And the idea was that I would paint them and I was never really going to share the drawings. But my sister was like, these are beautiful. Like you should share these as well. And so I put them up online and then yeah all of a sudden I was kind of selling all across the world and yeah it's kind of never really stopped since then that's been the journey. How did the first sale come through to you what did that look like? Uh, So I think and I would imagine this is the same for a lot of creatives on the start of their journey the first sales I got were friends and family Mm -hmm. and it's so lovely and don't get me wrong (laughs) it's the support you need and it keeps you going and it's so great but then the second day my website was live and this just like I honestly it blows my mind still thinking of it is I got a sale from someone in Canada who I'd never met before and I was like this is insane so it it was a whole other level when it was someone that you didn't know before before starting this because even though those people um that are supporting you from a friends and family point of view are so important when you feel like you've touched someone that you didn't even know just through what you've created it's this Mm -hmm. whole other level it's (laughs) 
yeah, I can't explain the feeling. I think like whilst you can do things in your corporate world that you're really proud of, when you've created something and it ends up in someone's home, it feels like a piece of you. Mm. You're like, I've made this and you like that piece. Like there's so many creatives in the world, but they chose me and I'm in their home and that's me. So it's just, yeah, it was a whole new level, I think. That's incredible. And, you know, even just mentioning, you know, having a website and being able to facilitate um, sending something overseas, that is a huge journey in and of itself. Did you teach you, did you make your own website? Did you hire someone? Yeah, no, this is all me. I haven't hired anyone yet. I, I mean, the idea of doing that would be crazy. I, well, you know, I've been on an interesting journey because I went to one of the companies I went to they needed a new website. So Mm -hmm. on my marketing side of things, whilst I was in PR, I actually also did build a website for one of the design firms I worked Mm -hmm. for. So I'd kind of self-taught myself. And I was like, you know, it might not be perfect, but just give it a go. And there are so many easy options out there too. Mm -hmm. I think I initially started on um, Squarespace, but Mm -hmm. I had like, I just asked friends and friends of mine who were more product-based were like, you might prefer Shopify. And Mm. I've moved to that and I've just kind of, you know, you can look up templates and just kind of had a go at it, you know? So, yeah, launching the website, I mean, it takes a lot of work. But like I said, I had time. So I was Mm. there and I was like, and also like I was motivated to do it. I I want this. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think it's the type of thing that it's just like you just make it happen. Yeah. And what was your timeline like with, you know, your redundancy came in, which I imagine must have been very difficult at the time. Yeah. You know what? It was strange. It was, it came in and I think for two weeks I was a bit like, okay, like Mm. I, over the, a few years ago, you know, I'd had like, I'd gone through a breakup and then I'd gotten a new job and then we'd lost my brother and I was like, and redundancy, you know, like, and Mm. a lot of people were made redundant in Australia like in 2019, but none of my friends had. So Mm -hmm. I didn't really have that person to talk to. And I felt like it was a bit much, but I think sometimes Mm -hmm. when the going gets tough, it's kind of where you get most inspired. Mm -hmm. Um, And you, you know, I had a few weeks where I was like, what am I going to do? You know, but then Mm -hmm. I realized I had all this time and it's just like, well, just free fall, do what you want to do. And Mm -hmm. I had been trying to, you know, create things late at night. Cause I think when, once you, if you're a creative and you're in flow, sometimes the hours just pass and you don't mm. know, like, and all of a sudden it's 3am and you're like, I've got work tomorrow. Like I've got to go like stop this now. But when you have all that time, it just, it was just an opportunity to stop, I think. And mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I just, it just kind of happened like that. I didn't really have a plan so much, but it just, I had mm. time. And the, the in terms of the timeline, redundancy I think it was late April and my website was launched around June. So it took about two months. Um, and look, at the start, I when I was made redundant, I didn't think I'm going to create a website and this is what's going to mm-hmm. happen. But then I'd made all these drawings and someone had said, like, you know, you should just make a website. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. So in terms of timeline from when I was made redundant to website starting was probably, yeah, two months. Wow, that's that's. Um, it sounds like a short time, but I can imagine it felt like also a very long time with a lot of mini yeah. mountains. <laughs> I think, do you know what? I think if you were doing other work at the same time, two months is a really short timeline to try and get something launched. But if you've got every single day for two months, mm. it was it was actually quite achievable. But also the other thing was I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't like the website must look this way because I think mm. in the corporate world, if you're creating a website for someone else, they've got a very clear vision about it must look like this or the product must be at this point. But I was, you know, I was learning as I went and if something wasn't right a week later, I could update and change the images. So yeah, I just, just kind of free fall into it, you know? And in terms of imagery as well, I was like, I'll just do it in the garage. Like Mm -hmm. kind of looks like a warehouse in there. We'll just get some natural lighting. I've got, I'm lucky. My sister had a, um, like a, camera from I think she did mm-hmm. photography in year 12 and it was just like laying there and I was like this is this will make my images high res this will do so it kind of everything just kind of fell into place I think um yeah I just did it myself and I think you know what I think that's probably it probably shows because it really is all me so all the writing all the text everything is just me it's not like I've yeah feel like it's not 
hit the mark. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of lucky in that sense, I think. It's so um, so interesting that you bring up as well the um, the difference between doing something for yourself and working to a client brief. You know, I have a, a background in advertising and, yeah. you know, was always so intense about having a great brief in which to work from. And I can resonate completely when it came totally. time to create my own brand and my own website and tone of voice, whatever it was, I was absolutely flying blind with no brief and changing things. And if I was a client, I would have absolutely tortured somebody. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think that's the interesting thing. Like if you're doing it for yourself, you know yourself so much better than anyone else does. Mm -hmm. So with the brief, it's like, well, it's just me. Like (laughs) I totally can resonate with that because in PR, it's much the same. Like you're trying so hard to learn about their tone of voice and what their personality is and how to get it right. Whereas when you're doing it for yourself, no, like, I don't know. I didn't have a plan. I didn't, didn't, I just was just like, well, this is how I feel. This is what I would want to see. And the Everything I create is always like, I'm only doing it for me. And if I wanted this in my house, like I missed yoga. So I wanted to see those pictures in my home while I couldn't go to yoga because we were all practicing in our homes. So Mm -hmm. it was for me initially, it wasn't like I was trying to hit someone else's idea of what art would look like. I was Mm -hmm. just trying to get the things on the walls for me. So yeah, I I think that's the thing. If, If you're creating for someone else, it's very different. Mm -hmm. And I think I've done a few commissions since my journey started and they're always my least favourite, much as I hate to say it. But I think it's because I'm so used to just going Mm -hmm. free-falling and when Mm -hmm. you're starting to overthink the whole thing, it's like, (laughs) I don't know, you're trying to, oh, do they want these colours to match this? And it's just, it's a a whole different ballpark when you Mm -hmm. aren't doing it from the heart. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's still, to be fair, commissions are still from the heart. It's just a different, it's a different mindset, I think. And, yeah, Mm -hmm. the whole journey that I was on initially was just like, I just want this. And if I saw this, I think I'd think that's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool for myself that I can document this process. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, my grandma was an artist and I I look back and think like, it's so weird that in in such a short time frame as well, she wouldn't have been able to share this journey. So all we've Mm -hmm. got is the finished product, which is still amazing, but just being able to share with everyone on the world, in the world, sorry, online Mm -hmm. is just, it's so crazy. And I'm sure you've found that as well. Like, yeah. yeah. You can it's sort of- a it's a funny feeling, um, you know, putting putting something you've made out there in the world. Um, ceramics for me wasn't something that I always had an inkling towards. I always had an inkling towards creativity and yeah. wanting. It's funny you talk about not having hobbies. I could I feel like I went years, like decades, without yeah. having a single <laughs> hobby. Um, and I wanted a hobby, and so went and you know got my hands into clay for the first time, and it was just like instant bonding that tactile nature of it and you know I would make things and I would um, look at them and go what is that like that is not what's in my head like (laughs) it's not good (laughs) and you know and then you know slowly over time over time I you know started to make things and I'm like oh okay this this feels good enough now like why don't I put it out there and see what people think and yeah it's a strange feeling do you know what's so interesting about you saying that though because I I paint at my mum's house in her garage and every time I create something that I'm like what is that she's like that's (laughs) perfect and I'm like it's the funniest thing (laughs) so you're you're sort of sitting there thinking I'm gonna wait till it's perfect but a lot Uh of the time if you show people those things that you're like are they ready yet they're the ones that people are like they're great and you're kind of there going it's not my favorite of all of them but it's the one that everyone else likes which is crazy too I think yeah I think it's just there's a lot of I'm trying to think of the word I don't know I'm just I think it's so nice that you can share there's a mm-hmm. lot to be said in people that that do share because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people don't and it's that vulnerability yeah. of getting to the point where you're like I'm just gonna share it you know and Sophie, that's one of the things I really love about following your journey on Instagram in particular is you put you put parts of your journey out there that, you know, have encouraged me to do the same at times, you know, your process, your challenge, your ups and downs with, with creating something and putting it out there in the world because so many of us just want to wait for the finished product and for the finished product to be, you know, usually already have received some feedback from someone somewhere to say, yeah, that looks good enough and to get that confidence to go out there where, 
by this the stuff that really attracts you know people if that's your end goal and and eyeballs and an interaction with art is the vulnerability and the the kind of the yucky stuff in the middle a little bit <laughs> that Definitely. you might not feel the most proud of so you know I think don't ever stop sharing um your your process and your journey because it's impactful and one thing I'm really interested about with you um you know making this journey out into the art world is and particularly having come from a different background, a corporate background, and then finding yourself, you know, in that quiet period and then relaunching yourself essentially back as an artist. Did that ever feel scary to say to the world, I am an artist? Yeah, definitely. And you know what? It it still feels scary. And I don't know whether that feeling will ever fade. Um, the difference between now and when I first started is I've made a lot more artist friends on the journey and they've come from all different levels of the, the the stage that they're at. And I was talking to an artist last weekend um, who has been in, in the industry for 10 years and mm-hmm. he's got his own gallery and I was so inspired by his works and he was still saying it's the most vulnerable thing. Um, so I, I definitely, it took me a long time before I could call myself an artist um, and I still I still feel a bit afraid to do it. And I think to your point, when your identity is attached to your corporate job for such a long time, it does feel a bit daunting to almost relaunch and be like, okay, well, I'm kind of leaving this this part behind and I'm kind Mm. of going into this side now. Um, But also like you can literally be anything you want to be. Like Mm -hmm. it's only you stopping you. And now that also everything's online you can learn so much more now than you ever you know you could have once back in Mm. the day so I think yeah like you can if something resonates with you that's what you can you can be and you just Mm -hmm. have to spend the time doing it over and over again and every artist that I've spoken to is like just keep painting every day Mm. like Mm -hmm. that's where you find it so I think um yeah, like I don't know if it'll ever go away and it still makes me, I still get the feeling every time someone buys a work of mine to think they chose me and that's mm. like I just, it still blows me away. So, yeah, I don't know if it'll ever feel real. It's mm-hmm. much, it's so much easier in a corporate role to say, you know, I'm an account manager mm. mm-hmm. because someone's hired you for that role yes. and they're, that's what they've called you and on LinkedIn you can call yourself that and it's very set in stone whereas when you go out on your own and I'm sure most people find this particularly in the early days it's like you know I'm I'm this new identity and I'm saying that that's me and no one hired me and I'm just so yeah I definitely it's definitely been something that's it's not the easiest thing to to come around to but definitely over time it, it makes it makes it a lot easier. So, yeah, you just have to keep going. What's your biggest fear about saying, you know, I'm, I'm an artist? You know what? I think it's, you know, and it's definitely subsiding, but I think it's a fear of judgment. Like, is my stuff good enough to say that? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's like, yes, I, I and because you've created it and you've just put it out there, it's like, you know, I don't know. I think it's the fear of judgment, which mm-hmm. ultimately once you start sharing, for every one person that might send something or say something that's slightly insulting, there's like a hundred people that are right in your corner that are like, no, you are, you've got this. So yeah, I think that fear of judgment has kind of subsided a little bit with the amount of people and yeah, the amount of people cheering me on and supporting. So I think that's, Mm. that's probably what was the most fearful. And it's so crazy because it's like, you're scared of what people are going to say, but then equally you're doing it for yourself anyway. So what does it mm-hmm. matter if they think you are or you aren't? You're just on your own journey. So, yeah, I, I think the scariest part is just it's the vulnerability and, and the fear of judgment. Then ultimately once you start and you kick off, it really most people aren't judging you in a negative way, I think. Mm-hmm. People are just proud, even if they don't love what you make and they don't have to, it's that they're proud of you for for doing for going out and being vulnerable so yeah that's so nice to hear i think you know so often we hold ourselves back for you know the the fear of the judgment of you know unknown person on the internet but also the fear of judgment of you know what if said family member or said old friend looks at it and thinks oh goodness you know yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, that's certainly my experience. I mean, totally. like, I wonder what this like random person that, you know, I worked with five years ago thinks about this. Like, why do, why do you care? <laughs> yeah, 100%. But then the funniest part about it is random person from five years ago is buying the work now. And you're like, I haven't spoken to you in five years. That's amazing. I'll come and drop mm-hmm. it off in person. So, no, you know, so the fears that you've got of those people, it's most of the time it completely backflips. And, you know, I think, yeah, we get so caught up in our heads on, well, I definitely do, on what people might think. But, yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. It's just, I mean, yeah, most of the time. As well. And, like, the thing is as well is there are so many things you could choose in the world to like and mm-hmm. not like and not everyone needs to like what you do so mm-hmm. even if they don't there's going to be someone that does you know that's so true and I mean your your paintings you're sat um we're on the video at the moment and you're sat in front of one of your gorgeous yoga illustrations oh, one of your yes. beautiful paintings I see a sculpture um, absolutely stunning um, when you face a blank canvas you know or a blank piece of paper how do you start Oh, that's crazy. So I sort of touched on it earlier, but I was inspired. My older brother was um, was a musician, so he was always creating. And when he passed away, he left this quote that said, just find what brings you happiness and joy and meaning. And after he passed, I sort of started seeing this counsellor on Zoom, which sounds so bizarre. And he was up in Byron Bay and he was like this magical grandfather figure. And he just said to me, so the first paintings I started to do, I was very prescriptive about it. And I was painting in little squares and it was looking very geometric. And he actually had said to me on this call, I think you need to stop thinking and just free fall and stop, like stop thinking about anything. And if you're a creative and you like the thing that you're doing, be it, you know, pottery or ceramics, all that kind of thing, if it's painting as it is for me, I just, I'm not thinking about anything and people find that so bizarre, but I literally just let my emotions pour out onto the canvas and I've stopped thinking about what it is that I'm creating. Obviously with yoga drawings, it's a little different. I'm looking at the poses and that was based on, I really missed the practice Mm -hmm. when I was at home, but with painting, it's very fluid and I never really know what's coming out, which makes it really challenging when people are like, Mm -hmm. what's the meaning behind this work? I'm like... Uh, well and you know what like people can see the most beautiful things in something and I'm like I was so angry that day (laughs) (laughs) that's that kind of an angry piece but you see all this beauty in it so I kind of don't like to tell the story so much when it comes to the paintings because I like that people are getting what they want out of it and it kind of makes it take on its whole new journey so I don't know when it comes to painting I don't I look at a blank canvas and I stop thinking and it's almost a meditative practice for me which I think actually goes hand in hand with yoga like I definitely I can get caught up in my head a little bit sometimes and get a little bit stressed and I think naturally and you'd find similar as well working in media you when you've gravitated towards that kind of role you're so used to being so caught up and in Mm -hmm. the thick of it so yoga really taught me to start meditating in a sense and so I kind of do the same when it comes to art like I'm not really thinking and people find it weird but I'm like it just (laughs) I'll just be like this color that works with this and and if I'm in an angry mood I'm like throwing paint and if I'm in a really calm mood I'll be more like (sighs) fluid and soft with the way it goes on to the work so yeah I don't know it's a really tricky one but it's very it's very fluid in the way it happens so it sounds beautiful like a beautiful experience to be a part of (laughs) Yeah, sometimes if I'm, like I said, if I'm in an angry mood, but the same thing happens, it's like it's still, if I'm, you know, frustrated or something, it's still an outlet. Mm -hmm. And if if I'm in a really beautiful mood as well and really like in a happy mood, it's also an outlet. So it's kind of, yeah, it's my outlet that I found, which is so great because like I said, and you have sort of touched on earlier before as well, is it's like before you had hobbies, I don't know how I got this out. Like I can't mm. think back to that time before. I'm like, what did I do? I must have just been going to a lot of lunches. Yeah, if you're anything like me, you probably went to way too many bars. And he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, Steve, that way. <laughs> totally. I'm like, this is so great though that I found this instead and I can have an outlet that I'm really proud of. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. I mean, it's I always been in me, but. And it's funny you say it's always it's always been in you, and I think that's a really interesting area to touch on. You know, for for anybody who is listening, who you know doesn't know what their thing 
is yet is you know allowing and trying different things to be able to to let that come out without the fear of anybody seeing you know you don't have to do anything um, with these works they don't have to go onto an Instagram page or be started you can just have a crack and yes, give it a go. Yes a hundred percent definitely I, like I would encourage everyone to just have a crack at things because I I thought pottery would be my thing and I went to three classes with my best friend who she'll say she's not creative but I think everyone has a little bit in them um, but she was like amazing at it <laughs> I could barely get the pottery to stay on the wheel every time I had to get help and I was like okay this is not for me I'm finding this stressful so you just I think it was just like the exploration of trying to find what it is but then you know you think back to your childhood and things that have always encouraged you from a young age and for me like I always loved you know cleaning out my room and rearranging Mm. it so it was no surprise then that later in life I did an interior design degree and equally like in in school when I was really small my teacher sent me to like private art classes on the weekend which would have been like so elementary but equally like I was doing that and it was something that was in me from so young so yeah, I think once you find that thing as an adult, it kind of falls into place. I don't know if you found that too, but you're like, oh, this makes sense. Like I was always into this as a child. And if you think back to your childhood and those things you really enjoyed, it's where this playfulness I think comes out because it's like you've almost gone back to that again mm-hmm. and you're like, this is it. And it makes sense because this was me as a child before all the other things came into my life. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is, have you found that with? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, um, my my thing that I realized, um, you know, I, I always try to make things very pretty. Um, but when I, you know, I say the word pretty, I use it loosely because my natural aesthetic is fairly simple, fairly clean, um, not a lot of color, but I always try to make things present really well. It was something I did in, you know, my work with writing PowerPoint presentations, with the scripting that would be part of the sales presentations that we would do. I always tried to make it follow and be a nice experience for people and, you know, be a beautifully presented piece of work. And now when I see, I know I haven't shared this in, in any platform, I think before, but the reason I started making ceramics is because I loved to cook. It's something that I've I've done, you know, my, my whole life actually, just trying and mucking around in the kitchen for fun. And I tried to make my meals look really lovely um, so that when they were presented down on the table, it was like, oh, it looks so good. I can't wait to eat it. And I hated my plates. I hated my bowls. They were like yeah. so ugly. They, you know, <laughs> just, just like. kind of ruining the story for you. <laughs> they were so like, yeah. And I was like, these are awful. Why do I have these? Why do I own these? Always kept looking for the ones that I wanted and could never quite find anything that made it look good and interesting. And it was very expensive to find the ones that I wanted. So I decided, well, what if I could make them? So that's the whole reason I did my first ceramics classes. You know, I'd like to make some really cool things so that my food looks really nice when, um, you know, when I place it down on the table. So I feel really proud of what I've presented out. And so, yeah, that's, that's why I started making, you know, with ceramics and like, just like you, I tried the wheel, the pottery wheel, (laughs) just like maybe one day, but like, just not my thing, way too specific, (laughs) way too much, you know, must do like this to make this happen. I love the free form. I love using my hands to push things into shape. So I I totally hear you got to try things and just give it a go and see what happens. Yeah. And, you know, hearing you talk about the way you cook and it's almost like your storytelling your cooking experience, which I hadn't thought of before, because to be honest, I can't cook at all. (laughs) Um, And I hadn't thought of it as a journey too, but, you know, maybe it's no surprise that then you sort of fell into advertising from that storytelling piece. And you're kind of doing the same when it comes to the journey of cooking, because you're not only just thinking about, you know, the ingredients and how it's plant-based, but you're also looking into the way it presents at the end. And it's that whole experience. And maybe, yeah, in a sense, it's kind of, you're, like me in a sense as well, is using those skills that you got from the corporate world and translating that, you know, that's now inherent into you. But probably it's always been in you to try and tell the story from start to finish. And, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of when you think back on things in childhood, it's kind of you kind of go, oh, yeah, like that's why I do this now. Uh Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to remember that because you're so right. I haven't thought of it like that and you are yeah. so right. So thank you. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but it um, only comes out in these conversations, doesn't it? You sort of start thinking about it. And go, oh, yeah, that's right. That is me. And, yeah, I think that's where it, it works. And if you find the thing that is you, you'll know because it 
works. And if like you and I, you try the pottery wheel and you go, hmm. this just isn't working it's a, for it's me. It's not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Take my hat off to anyone that does it because that was hard. Um, but, yeah, you kind of know when it when it feels right, you just ride the wave and you do fall into this, like, flow where you just lose hours in experimenting and creating and, yeah, mm-hmm. and I guess it must be the same in the kitchen too, which, yeah, I just, mm-hmm. not for me. That is where I'm worse than pottery, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I, we all find our things, but I think what you've touched on there um, is wonderful because, you know, I think it's a lot of what holds people back from making a big change in their life or starting over is, you know, what you've known is easy to explain, what you've known is easy to um, to do again and, and not having the end goal in mind um, before you start um, is is pretty terrifying. And, you know, one of the biggest things I find that um, can stop you in your tracks, I know this is certainly my experience, is how you financially support yourself while you go on that journey when you don't know how long that's going to be and you don't know how long um, until you can say to people, I'm a this and this is what I do to make money. Uh, how was that journey yeah. for you? I've had a bit of an interesting one in that I went back to the corporate world after a few months of of doing this, but I haven't gone back to the corporate world in a full-time way. And I've definitely set more boundaries in how I manage my time now. So I kind of try and chunk my time. And so I work from home, um, which is probably one of the greatest things to have come out of the pandemic is more people are accepting of people working from home. So I'm able to work from home Monday to Wednesday. And then I kind of switch off from corporate and move into to creating. And there is a definite, like, it is hard to switch and it takes me a few days or a few hours to try and ch- turn off that mentality. Um, but I still, yeah, I'm still kind of tip- dipping my toes in both, which I think isn't probably not necessarily important, but it is probably a journey that a lot of us do because it is hard to just think that it's going to turn on one day and you've got yeah. <laughs> all the money coming <laughs> in. And also the other thing is, as well as a creative, I don't think, I think you'd be crazy to just do it for money mm-hmm. because I don't think you'd have the passion in it. Um, totally. But at the same time as well, and what we sort of touched on earlier too, is I think there's this concept, like people have this idea in their mind that it's corporate or it's creative going out on your own and it's not really, you can't really interchange them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I Mm -hmm. think you can definitely learn things from the corporate world and I'm always learning things from my role there that I can then translate into what I do from a personal front. So whether Mm -hmm. it's even just like really basic, like I need to chunk my time out and I need to make to-do lists and regardless of the fact that I work for myself on those days, I still need to tell people, well, no, I can't do something on a Thursday or Friday because that is an art day for me and I focus on art then whereas I think initially particularly people were like great Thursday Friday is your day off we'll put all our Mm -hmm. stuff in then and I was like that's not why I'm trying to do this otherwise Mm -hmm. I'd just stay in the corporate world so I think to start off with in terms of finances it's just um it's being realistic I think about how it does take time and it's not something that just happens overnight um Mm -hmm. that said it is it's nice being able to have the flexibility of still trying to support myself in a, in a corporate world just to have that reliable income and then be able to spend the rest of my week focusing on me and, and getting that time back. But I'm so excited for the holidays too because I think the most creative I was was that free fall time where I was mm-hmm. like completely in creative land. So, yeah, it's it's a journey and I don't think it happens overnight. I mean, it certainly isn't for me, but I think that's very it's very common. A lot of the artists that I'm friends with now, they're in the same boat. We all sort of do corporate world jobs to just to kick off. And I think that's mm-hmm. probably more common, but also maybe less spoken about because mm-hmm. you only you don't put that online. No one wants mm-hmm. to see me sitting at a computer <laughs> three days a week. <laughs> I barely post on those days because I think, well, it's a bit boring, but it is the reality. It's mm-hmm. um, you know, to get your to get your works out there and to get the the following it takes time and it is a long journey but it's also so rewarding and Mm. yeah like I said I I just don't think you could do it for money alone it would be great if I could translate this into a full-time role but I do it for the love of it not necessarily for the finances so Mm -hmm. it's just about balancing life I think and making things work for you but we do work we live in such a different world now where work Mm. is so accessible from you know from wherever you are. So 
if it is picking up contracts or there are so many ways to try and make money to try mm. and supplement how you're starting out. So I think, yeah, like I definitely don't think people talk about it as much because it's like, look at me, I'm doing great and I sold mm. this and I did this and that's what you think people want to see online and also mm. it's, but it, the reality is it's, you know, it's a long journey and it takes it takes time but that's the thing. Like all the successful people in most industries anyway, I think, in anything creative, it's like you look at their journey and you think, well, hold on, you've been doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's why you're at this point now because you didn't give up and you kept going. And I'm sure when you were only 19 you know, months in, you were still doing mm -hmm. something else to try and make it work. So I think it's just not giving up and hopefully one day, you know, more eyes can see you and people love your work. But I think for most of us, it's not for the, for the financial gain, it's for just the love of it. I recently read um, Samantha Wills' um, book. I've I don't know. I've got it. I haven't read it though. Oh, gorgeous. Good. Yeah. Great book. And she's got a line in there that says, um, it took me 12 years to become an overnight success. And I just love that um, in terms of, you know, we, we can all experience things so now, anything we want. Well, maybe not anything, given I'm on the East Coast of Tassie and it takes like <laughs> 10 years to get anything delivered here. But, um, you know, we can pretty well get anything we want whenever we want it, you know, virtually straight away. And, you know, but yes. when it comes to our own aligned self or our own journey or our own, um, you know, success, uh, in, in whatever it is that we want to do, we expect it just as quickly, but that takes time Definitely. and it takes flexibility, um, yeah, I think. A hundred percent. And I think as well, like sometimes, you know, you see those people at the top of what you think is so successful and they, they always reflect on the journey and say the journey was the best part. Like mm, now yeah. that they're making it, it's like more, 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 we want this, we want that. And if you read these kind of stories and stuff, a lot of the time those reflections on the journey are actually what people sort of fall in love with in their own path. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting because when you're on the journey, you're like, oh, gosh, I just wish I could do this all the time. And But at the same time, yeah, when people reflect back on all those really successful people, they look back and they're like, this was the best time, that time where you you're doing it for you and it is a bit of a struggle and you're experimenting and you're doing all this exciting stuff. But at the time, it's a little bit stressful because you're like, <laughs> I'm just mm. putting stabs out there. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, this might work. I kind of like this. But at the same time, it is just, it's just putting yourself out there, I think. And it's, that's the scariest part. Yeah, absolutely. And what did you find uh, personally, you know, for you, for Sophie, going through this change from, you know, this role that you had and you were made redundant into refining your art, what did you find changed the most about yourself as a human? Uh, I, I can barely look back on who I was two years ago and think that was the same person as now. I think I've changed just so much. I'm I mean, look, and even at the start of this as well, my best friend, she would probably have said that I was all those things two years ago as well, but I'm more of those things now. I'm more giving of my time. I'm more happy to have chats with people and listen to people. And, um, and in terms of creativity, I'm more of that. So I think in finding the things that were always inherently me, but in, through this journey, those things have kind of grown. So I think mm -hmm. it's like I feel more me now because that's probably the biggest change is that I feel like I'm being true to myself, whereas before I think they were in me and people knew about them. But, yeah, it, it definitely feels like I'm on the right journey, whereas before it was like I'm embarrassed when people are asking what my hobbies are and I'm burnt mm -hmm. out so I've got to go to yoga because I've got to read find myself and all those things. So I don't think necessarily like I've still always been me, but I think those things now, all those things that I really liked, they've really come out more because I feel like I'm on the right path. But, yeah, I don't, I think that's probably the biggest change is I feel like I'm, yeah, more true to who I am now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes perfect sense. And inevitably, there's going to be some days on this journey where the energy is a bit low, the creativity <laughs> is a bit tapped, things are, you know, a little harder. It's pretty Definitely. natural, I'm sure. <laughs> How do you keep your momentum in those times? Oh, it's almost... I mean, it sounds funny, but like, you've just got to keep paying, like, you just got to keep doing that thing. And if it's like for me, where it is almost like a release and a meditation, it helps anyway, which is the irony of the whole thing is if I have a conversation with someone who sort of maybe doesn't believe in dreams as much or something like that, 
all it does is inspire me to want to paint more to try and release that emotion bit. It. It's not as nice as the other emotions that might be really happy. It's still a release for me. So I think mm-hmm. on the days, it's ironic because on the days that I don't feel motivated, I actually still paint. And I think that's the thing is it's like I still do things and if I don't like them, it doesn't matter. Like that mm-hmm. just might be for me only or my own little you know, so I think mm. like, yeah, it's just, I mean, you don't have to share everything. Um, sometimes you just, if you're doing what you love, you still do it. You just, yeah, you keep that to yourself. And some days you think that you don't want to create and you get in there and you start painting and then all of a sudden you're like, this is amazing. So I think mm-hmm. it's just keeping on going and keeping at something. And if there's no motivation, I still, that's, I think, where I've chunked out my time and my days and I'm like, no, you still have to go back to it and do it. And the, mm-hmm. the beauty as well of, of having social media and, and having people who are following along the journey as well is I'm, I'm sharing those days where I'm like, mm, okay, this isn't going well. And, but I'll just tell everyone that it's not going well because it's not, mm-hmm. it's not going to be a perfect day every day. It's like, you know, I tried to make sculptures recently and I had like I just YouTube a lot of things that I don't know and I Mm -hmm. tried to make this box for the silicon mold to go into and it just disintegrated before my eyes. So I had like all of the silicon, which is really expensive as well, just like pouring out onto the floor and I was so close to tears. But then I was like, you know what, I'm going to post that I did that today and I'm going to try and go and find something new from Bunnings today and find a new way to do this because, you know, it totally didn't work and I'm new to this. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so sharing that as well on the days that aren't great, it just makes you, it's a release for me, but it also makes, I imagine, for people reading it, it more authentic. This journey mm-hmm. isn't perfect. It's not like every day I'm like, this is great. I've got motivation and there's new ideas in my head. Some days I'm like, well, I don't know. But if I'm just sharing it anyway, I think it's more relatable. It's like, that's just, it's the reality of it is. It's like, I don't know, it's not going to be perfect mm-hmm. every day. I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I think many of us look to, um, you know, maybe the types of creative outlets or maybe the types of careers that people have and you see that in its end result, but you miss all of that stuff in the middle that gets to that end result. The, you know, I'm sure you've had canvases you've just wanted to throw in the fire. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Paint over them. Yeah. Well, yes. like the texture on that one's great. I'm like, that's about five paintings under there. <laughs> that's why the texture's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny and you know trying to figure out when to stop and then looking back at it and being like oh I hate 100%. this and so yeah, yeah. I, I love that you share that sort of thing because it helps it gives permission for other people to be able to try things uh, allow things to fail you know failure is where we just learn so much about ourselves as scary and as horrible as it is um, yeah. that failure is you know where then the next thing is coming and you just never Definitely. know what's coming around the corner when you throw your no. plans in the bin yeah. 100% <laughs> you just don't and that do you know what it's the most scary thing but it's also the best thing ever just going in without a plan is just like you just don't know where the world's going to take you I think that's the thing is it's like you think to start on a journey like this where you're going to create something yourself that you need a whole business plan and you need Mm -hmm. this and that but really it's like the best part out of it is you just don't know what's around the corner. You don't know who's going to send you a text or a, any email or an inbox on Instagram and say, hey, like, are you interested in this? It's like, yes, that's amazing. I've spoken to so many people I didn't even know that, like, existed outside of my circle before. So I'm like, yeah, I think that's it. It's like you think there's going to be a plan and there's a prescriptive way to do this, but there's absolutely not. You don't know where it's going to take you. Um, but I think also, like, especially through this time, I feel like social media and everything is kind of changing. It's Mm -hmm. like before when it first sort of launched and Instagram introduced filters and stuff like that, people had a very, they were trying to show you a certain side of life. Mm -hmm. And definitely like, I still like, like you, I like making my end product really nice and my images and that kind of thing too. But I think particularly with like TikTok and stuff now, people want the raw authentic side Mm -hmm. and and the stuff in the middle because it's like, like you could just be like this is me at the end but you know people love reading the stories about Mm -hmm. the journeys and that's why like that book by Samantha Wills I've got to read it actually (laughs) but um, it's probably why it's so great as well because it's not just like I did this thing and all of a sudden it was great it's like we want to know 
Oh, mm. I definitely like I love following people online who tell that journey and are more raw about it because it's like mm. more relatable to me and what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's part of it. I yeah, I, I agree, and I think you know, knowing that just it stops us from holding ourselves back, which we can do. Um, we can do so much. So, um, Sophie, we are sort of starting to come to, I guess, the end of our our time together today. And I have to ask you because it's right behind you. Um, <laughs> you have a beautiful sculpture, um, which oh. looks like it might be um, a, a yoga pose. It's like it kind is. of eagle legs. I'm getting. It's a very yes. beautiful. Yes, so these these are coming soon. I've been working on them for so long. And to be fair as well, sculptures, is it's a little outside of my realm, but we've gotten them to a point where they're ready to cast and soon I think they will be candles. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so next up I will be turning these into candles. There's two of them. There's maybe a third. I just haven't got mm-hmm. it as long as the way. But, yeah, mm-hmm. hopefully these will be candles soon. So there'll be a little candle at the top. But, yeah, I've got them Gorgeous. coming along. It's just a... A waiting game. We'll work out how to do the candles. Next. Beautiful. That's it. You're learning along the way, right? Totally. Yeah, learning something new every day. And you know, you support. Um, I love that you have my little um, yeah, ceramic. Yeah, got that well, too. Yes. I love it. Some I of my ceramics in the background. The time. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so kind of you. And I do love how much you're supporting other creatives um, and, you know, even just coming on today to share your story so openly, um, you know, beyond the gram and, you know, opening up the doors a little bit more to your journey is just such a wonderful gift to to give to people. So um, your generosity Aww. of spirit is is admirable. So thank you. Um, and, you know, as we get to, to the end of this, I want to know how can the listener and I support you further? Possibly if you liked listening about my journey, which still seems crazy to say, I'm on Instagram <laughs> at Sophie Lacouture Art. My surname is a bit of a long one. It's French, so it might be easier in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Spelling it out every time I spell it out, it's like L-E and then a new word, C-O-U. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, and then also my website, which is also my full name, so sophielacouture.com. So they're the two ways to find me mostly. But, oh, beautiful. Yeah. I will definitely make sure that I have all of that info in the show notes so people can go enjoy your beautiful illustrations, your beautiful abstracts, and in the future, your beautiful sculptures as well. Um, I think the world is very grateful that you are creating art um, because we need more of it. We need more beauty. We need more um, good Sophie vibes. So um, thank you Aww. for coming on to the pod today and chatting with me, gifting up your time. It's been such a pleasure to chat with you. Oh, thank you. I've loved chatting with you too. And thanks for your time because, yeah, I'm very excited to see where this podcast will go. Oh, like anything, it is a journey, right? And you just got to yeah, get started. That's it. Start <laughs> somewhere and see where it goes. The exactly. Exactly. Well, Sophie, thank you so much. It's been great to chat with you. And, um, yeah, we'll have all the goodies in the show notes for the listener. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, the stories of starting over with your host, me, Kim Curtin. If you liked the episode and are keen to hear more, please hit the follow button and leave a review. And let's keep the conversation going on Instagram at Unemployed and Afraid, where there's more goodies and links to today's show notes. See you there.